Something you may not know about me is I'm obsessed with unicorns. I love rose gold, I love Earl Grey tea. I have a whole nother life outside of my nerd SEO existence. So knowing your online searcher and all the different ways that motivate them to buy is critical. And I'm gonna show you how to access individual buyers through data online. In search engine marketing and in marketing period, I think we tend to think about demographics. Well, my customers are, you know, a certain age, they have a certain job, they do a certain thing. Well, now things have really changed. I mean, now we talk about psychographic marketing. And a psychographic market would be, she thinks wearing a unicorn headband on a YouTube video is a good idea. She likes rose gold. She loves makeup. She likes red wine. That's me. Okay, like, I like when you go into Starbucks and the person in front of you orders this ridiculous coffee order that takes like 10 minutes to say. And you're like, really? It's just coffee. No, it's a slice of me. It's what matters to me at the moment. So when I turn to Google or a search engine, I'm going to be laying it out for Google. Tell me what I need to know. Where can I find this? Help me solve my pain. So what we need to think about is the searcher. The psyche of the searcher, we like to call it. Do you really know who this person is? Are they just a blank face to you? Is it hits? Is it traffic? Is it bounce rate? Those aren't human. Those are humans doing that behavior. But unless you really take a look at who they are and what motivates them, they're just hits and traffic. And that's really hard to understand that particular kind of of engagement because it just takes all the personality away. So to, we're gonna talk about the psyche of the searcher is who are, who are these people coming to your site? What motivates them and what drives them? And it might be something completely off topic, but somehow you can weave your topic into their thinking. So let's take a look at this. So on my screen here, you'll see that we have the psyche of the searcher, get to know your online avatar. Now, I'm not talking about the movie, I'm talking about a I love that movie though, so let's not get it wrong, but I'm talking about the searcher, okay? The person who comes to your website. So what we wanna think about is, who are they? Are they male and female? Like really think about who this person is. What, how old are they? What do they make financially? What's their titles? They're chief marketing officers, they're business owners, they're stay-at-home moms, they're, they're retirees. You gotta really think about who is this person sitting in front of Google typing in these phrases. Then we wanna think about, is it a fast close or a slow close? Meaning lots of education, very little amount of education. They buy super fast. So unicorn headband, probably a very super fast education. I'm gonna buy it like that. SEO on the other hand, lots of conversations, lots of education until they end up buying. So you really have to understand your audience and who you're selling to. Um, are they fe feature or cost driven? I think we all dream that they'll be feature driven, but at the end of the day, most people cost driven. Uh, who do they have to impress? Are they an influencer, a decision maker, or an implementer? Really important because if you are a uh, influencer, then you go and give them a PowerPoint deck that they can take to their boss to help champion you for the sale. If they're a decision maker, well, that's easy. That's why I speak for, for CEO groups all over the country because, boy, you get right to the decision makers. It's great. And then finally, the implementer, the person who's actually going to do the work that the decision maker and the influencer have agreed to. And the poor implementer is the one that gets to do the work. So knowing who they are, name them. It's Sally, Bill, Bob, Joe, I don't care. Fill their face in. What does their face look like? What does their hair look like? In my book, I've got some great examples in my book about one guy drove an Uncle Sam on there because he works with government. And one person put like a half thing and half of it was like the Breaking Bad dude and the other half was like a model. It was so funny because he's like, we work with both sides of the equation. So really understanding, and you may have multiple personas. You might have Jack, Bill, and Bob. And one person does this and another person does this and another person does that. Have them hung up in your marketing team or in your office. And when you're gonna go right, I want you to talk to Steve. I want you to talk to Bill and Diane and whoever those people are and today I'm talking to Diane because I know that she suffers or does this. And today, tomorrow I'm going to talk about Steve. And I know that Steve is the, you know, the head of IT and he does such and such and such. But if you don't focus on who that person is, then you're just talking to no one. You're talking like a vacuum. And it doesn't quite resonate like it should. 
Let me give you an example here. So we've got um, a couple ways. We call them personality indicators. This is one of our clients, Academy LGBTQ. Now, when we went to go work with them, they're like, well, we do corporate training, corporate inclusion training at corporations. Someone's transitioning in a department. We've got, you know, there's all, all different kinds of, of people that are entering the workforce that have been in the workforce, but have never been seen as inclusive or part of the team. Now they are. So they go in, they train corporate, but they said, yeah, but how do we make a website that also speaks to parents and helping them to take care of the children that are, that are in LGBTQ community? So I said, you don't have to pick. It's all about personal identifiers, right? The psyche of the searchers. So you'll see on, on their site, we've got two boxes. One says for organizations, one says for parents and caregivers. So we know that Jill is the person, is the hiring manager, is the person that brings people in to talk about diversity. And then we also know Bob and Steve and their son, John. And John's transitioning, and they're looking for help and resources. So as soon as we get to the website, I can immediately self-identify. Let me show you another example. I have a client called Seal Shield. Now, Seal Shield, they work with very specific people. You'll see on the homepage right here that we've got four different kinds of people that visit the site. We've got infection control practitioners. We've got IT and computer systems managers. We've got facilities managers, and then we have just global services. When I come here and I fit into one of those categories, I'm like, thank you. And I immediately click on infection control practitioners and boom, they go right to a conversation that speaks directly to their issues inside a hospital because they sell hospital medical equipment that is antibacterial. So we have to think about when I come here, I need to self-identify. Do you remember a time when you went to Amazon, I'll never forget, and, and you logged in and right at the top it says, welcome Heather. You're like, oh my God, it knows who I am. Do you remember this moment? I remember it, maybe I'm showing my age. But I'm like, genius, now you know we put, we put your name on a Starbucks cup when you go to order. We put a name on um, you know, a, a, a document or we put a name on a, on a social media profile. We all want to be identified as a unique individual who has unique needs. Some maybe more than others. But you have to remember that that's what's important to me, not what's important to you. So let's take a look here. So um, AARP. So if I'm going to be AARP and I'm going to start creating content, I can take a peek and see who are they catering to right now. Maybe I have some kind of adjunct retirement planning service. And I know that AARP is directly connected to that. And I can start sharing content with my ideal profiles. Well, I gotta know what AARP is up to. So you'll see on my screen here, I'm in a tool called SEM Rush. I'll put the information in the description under the video. This tool, actually, you can go and spy on any particular company. You can put AARP.org, and I can scroll down, and here you'll see the exact things that they rank for. Of course, they're gonna rank for their name. And then the next one is AARP Games. And that is 150,000 searches a month. So we can tell that what's resonating with their ideal customer is where their head's at. And their head's at, I want to have, I want to be interested. I want to be, I want to be mentally engaged. I want to stay sharp. And so they're searching for games. And clearly AARP has done a good job of creating content around solitary, uh, solitaire, um, spider, solitaire, online games. There's a couple other things like bridge in here, word games, crossword puzzles. So they know their audience. They know exactly who they are and what they need. I want that for you. So I'm gonna have this as a downloadable, fill this out. If you send this to me or post it in the comments below, I will give you an hour of my time and we'll deep dive into your business. But if you don't do the work, I'm not give them the time. So if you fill this out and you get it to me, I'm then going to give you an hour of my time and we'll deep dive into your business and we'll figure out who is the psyche of your online searcher and how can I start speaking to them specifically. Okay, so if you love this content like I do, subscribe to my channel, hit the button that's right next to it, and you'll get notified every time I launch a new video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to go and figure out who that online searcher is. They're waiting for you. Go find them.